Hi, I'm Max O'Hearn. I'm Digital Events Strategy Specialist for the Meetings and Events Department at the Mathematical Association of America. Welcome to 1529 18th Street Northwest in scenic DuPont Circle of Washington, D.C. MAA has been proud to call this historic building our home for the past 44 years. Before that, the building had an interesting legacy of its own, and MAA is proud to have contributed our own story to that legacy. Of course, we're saying farewell, so let me take you through the building one last time. Come with me, I'll show you all around. So here we are now inside the magnificent lobby of 1529 18th Street. This is the first space that most visitors will see as soon as they enter the headquarters for the Mathematical Association of America. This building forms one of three buildings that form the Mary P. Dolciani Halloran Center for Mathematics, named after the famous mathematician and author. This particular building is the Edgar H. Vaughn Building, that is 1529 18th Street. Edgar H. Vaughn was the father of James Vaughn, who helped make the building fund possible and MAA able to move into this magnificent space back in 1977. Next door is the George H. Polia Building, named also after the famous mathematician. If I have three dividing points, one, two, three. <laughs> and in the far back, we have the MAA Carriage House, rounding out our three building complex. On either side of me, you can see these magnificent stained glass icosahedrons. That is also happens to be the MAA logo. Now, also beneath me, you can check out this magnificent irregular pentagonal tiling of the field. This pattern was developed and discovered, in fact, by Marjorie Rice, an amateur mathematician and homemaker in 1960s California. At that time, Marjorie Rice was reading her son's copy of Scientific American in which the famed mathematician Martin Gardner discussed newly discovered patterns of completely filling, or tessellating, an infinite plane with congruent irregular pentagons. In 1995, Marjorie Rice formulated the pentagon variant demonstrated here, which was adapted by Dora Schatzschneider and thereafter applied to this gorgeous foyer. Again, as you enter MAA, you are surrounded by mathematics on all sides. MAA has called this building its home since 1978, but long before that it had a rich history all of its own. The Vaughn Building's tale begins with a building permit issued on November 22, 1902. The architects, Joseph Corton Hornblower and James Rush Marshall, operated one of the most prominent firms in the city and were involved in the design of the Smithsonian Institution's National Museum of Natural History. In 1915, the newly independent nation of Cuba sent an ambassadorial legation here to Washington, D.C. At that legation's head was Carlos Manuel de Céspedes y Quesada, along with his family. He lived in this building as his residence, officially as the ambassadorial residence for Cuba. The Vaughn Building remained a seemingly natural fit for diplomatic and political developments in the 1910s and 20s. Charles Evan Hughes purchased the property in March 1921. President Warren G. Harding appointed him Secretary of State in 1921, the year that he moved in. Here we are now in the Rural v. Churchill Conference Room on the first floor of the Vaughn Building. The room is named after the mathematics faculty member at the University of Michigan, Rural v. Churchill, who authored a number of mathematical textbooks in the 1940s and 1950s. Here we house all of the photos of our former MAA secretaries, MAA treasurers, MAA secretary treasurers, and MAA executive directors, as well as a few national meetings. No, not including MAA MathFest, which wasn't around just yet. One of the more striking features of mathematics in the MAA headquarters building is this arresting bronze sculpture by Helmand Ferguson, Umbilic Taurus NC. This sculpture premiered in Ferguson's Mathematics in Stone and Bronze exhibit here in 1991 and has a fun interactive feature to its math. If you put your finger on this statue and move it three times all the way around, it'll take all that time to get back to the starting point. This is what's called a hypocycloid deltoid. Imagine moving a triangle uh, with three cusps that are inverted on each other, a deltoid, 120 degrees through space as it rotates around in a circle. It's a hypocycloid in the sense that its points point out from a certain center of the torus. And of course, a torus being another word for a circular object with a hole in the middle, i.e. a donut. Arguably, the most eye-catching architectural feature of this building is the magnificent spiral staircase that stretches all the way from the lobby, spiraling up to the fifth floor. And on the wall, we have every MAA president from its founding in 1915, descending in chronological order down to the lobby. As we go up the staircase here, you might think we're out of surprises, but hey, another eye-catching mathematical sculpture. Craig Schaffer's Time Shell also debuted in the MAA in 1991 and was donated, in fact, by Edwin Beagle's daughter, Emily. 
Like mathematicians, Scheffer finds himself inspired by shapes that owe their structure to the type and sequence of forces that created them. So now we're here in the Edward G. Beagle conference room on the second floor of the building. Named after the Yale topologist who led the new math movement in the 1960s, the Beagle conference room has some of our most ornate decoration in the building. This is a very large fireplace, so you can tell this is one of the more important rooms of the house from when it was originally built. The magnificent mirror above this large fireplace was donated by Gerald and Judith Porter. We have this Victorian candelabra hanging from a ceiling medallion, decorating the interior ceiling of the room. I forgot how many steps there were. Nearly to the fourth floor, though. Next time, I'm gonna take the elevator. Here we are on the fourth floor of the building, which has many offices, such as the author's room, which is dedicated to the generosity of six national publishing houses in recognition of the contributions of mathematics textbooks authors in their contributions towards education of American youth. Also on this floor is the Benjamin Banneker office, named after the famous African-American mathematician, astronomer, and surveyor who participated in the 1791 survey of Washington, D.C. Since that time, uh, D.C. has grown and expanded considerably, leading for its outer fringes uh, all the way up to, by the end of the 19th century, this neighborhood, DuPont Circle, and then considerably still further as the decades progressed into the 20th century, leading to the 1970s when MAA moved into this complex. Whew. This is one of the original Otis elevators and original to the building. This goes from all the way from the first floor lobby to the fourth floor. It's much better than the stairs. Come on, let's go to the carriage house. So here we are now outside, standing outside of the oldest of the three buildings of the Dolciani Halloran Mathematics Complex. This is the MAA Carriage House, which was in fact a carriage house for the neighborhood back in the day. For a long time, it served as a sort of shared garage for people to park their carriages and stable their horses. There's even a bail lifting mechanism on the other side of the building. In 2003, thanks to a generous grant from Paul and Virginia Halmos, MA was able to convert this former stable into a state-of-the-art meeting rental facility. The MA carriage house was used for external client meetings as well as MA internal projects, such as the Distinguished Lecture Series, which brought people from all over the community to learn more about mathematics in these very walls. At my feet, the River of Bricks. The River of Bricks consists of individual bricks. Each one that's inscribed that you see before you has been donated by some uh, member of the MAA community who wants to uh, commemorate a loved one, a famous mentor, or somebody who is really important to them in their mathematical relationship to the world. This is a way that we can have a lasting permanence in terms of what people choose to remember and contribute in their mathematical experiences. It has its own geographic significance as well. If you fall over there, there's a border that has a little 90 degree angle on it, forming a perfect square diamond around the river, which makes it very similar, you could say, to a certain city landscape. In fact, if you were to think of this branch of the river as the Potomac, and this branch of the river as the Anacostia, then we would basically have a little layout of the District of Columbia that we're standing on right now. And of course, that would, it can only mean that this icosahedron that I'm now standing in front of is a pinpoint marker. You are here at the MAA headquarters. These buildings have served MAA well as headquarters, and we'd like to think we've left a little bit of our legacy as well. We're currently moving out some of our legacy, but we can't wait to show you our new space. If you're an MAA member, thanks so much for making this journey possible. Hope you enjoyed the tour, and we look forward to seeing you at our new headquarters soon.